Welcome back to The Survival Historian. Today, we're uncovering a secret that medieval craftspeople discovered through necessity wood engineered to surpass steel itself. Imagine building a fortress with almost no iron. Your resources are timber and, well, ingenuity. What you create lasts eight centuries. This is survival through innovation. Iron in the medieval world was precious, reserved for weapons and armor. Builders had almost none. So they faced a brutal choice, innovate or fail. Medieval artisans responded by mastering wood at a level modern engineers are only now rediscovering. Untreated wood seems fragile. It warps, rots, burns, splinters. But medieval craftspeople didn't accept these limitations. They engineered around them through three revolutionary practices, curing, coating and joinery. Medieval wood preparation was a discipline of patience and precision. Logs were stacked with air gaps and left to season for years, allowing moisture to escape slowly and evenly. This prevented warping and created material twice as strong as hastily dried wood. Some craftspeople went further. Water seasoning, submerging logs in ponds for months or years, removed the starches and sugars that fed rot and insects. The wood emerged darker, denser, and profoundly resistant to decay. Heat treatment took this further. Master craftspeople slow-baked timber, causing subtle chemical changes in the cellulose that strengthened the molecular bonds between fibers. Mechanical densification completed the transformation. Weighted presses compressed wood, squeezing out air and increasing density to levels of astounding hardness. If curing provided internal strength, surface treatments provided external armour. Medieval workshops developed natural coatings that sealed and protected timber against moisture, fire and pests. Resinous mixtures, called dragon's blood in some traditions, were boiled from tree saps and natural gums. Applied to wood surfaces, these resins prevented water penetration and provided fire resistance by charring and insulating the grain beneath. Mineral-based treatments complemented them. Groundstone mixed with lime and natural oils created protective shells that hardened on the wood and repelled insects. The genius was understanding that wood's true weakness wasn't its core strength, but its permeability. By creating barriers, organic and mineral, medieval craftspeople sealed wood against destruction. Properly treated beams outlasted the very stones surrounding them. The true revolution lay in geometry. Medieval builders developed interlocking joints of extraordinary sophistication, each designed to distribute stress and allow wood to move naturally without degradation. The mortise and tenon joint, a precisely cut rectangular hole and projecting element, created multiple contact surfaces that distributed force across broad areas rather than concentrating it at single points. No nails required, just geometry. Dovetail joints achieved nearly impossible strength through interlocking wedges. These joints could resist pulling and pressing with equal force. Medieval craftspeople cut them by hand with precision that remains flawless after six centuries. But the deepest wisdom lay in understanding wood itself. Medieval builders recognized that wood moves with seasons and moisture changes. Rather than fighting this reality with rigid metal locks that would eventually crack, they designed for it. Wooden pegs allowed subtle movement along the grain while keeping joints locked. The structures could flex, could breathe, yet remain integral. Today, as we face resource scarcity and climate crisis not unlike the medieval world, we're returning to these principles. Modern materials scientists have created superwood, chemically treated and compressed to rival steel. Yet they've simply rediscovered what medieval artisans understood through intuition and experience. The principle is constant. Remove what invites decay, densify structure, create surfaces that repel water, respect wood's nature. 
Medieval craftspeople were pioneers of what we now call sustainable building. They sequestered carbon in structures that have lasted centuries without the energy-intensive production of steel and concrete. If we restored medieval knowledge and combined it with modern science, we could create truly sustainable alternatives to the materials poisoning our world. Medieval structures still stand. Their lessons remain legible in every precisely fitted joint, every treated beam. Throughout history, human survival hinges not on abundance, but on ingenuity. When resources are scarce, we innovate. Medieval artisans facing a world without iron became masters of wood. Their bridges still span, their beams still bear weight. This is the inheritance worth protecting, not monuments, but knowledge. The understanding that to survive we must work with nature rather than against it. If you found yourself inspired by the ingenuity of the medieval world, like, share and subscribe to The Survival Historian for more stories of how human resilience and respect for the natural world shape our past and future. Because survival is never about having the most resources. It's about understanding what you have and wielding that knowledge like a true craftsperson. Thank you for joining us. History is waiting to teach us.